everyone. Welcome back to Ramadan for You TV. I'm Zainab Afsa. I'm Yusan Yuja. We are in the last 10 days of Ramadan. As you may know, there is a sec sacred night called Laylatul Qad, which takes place in the last 10 days of Ramadan. The Quran was revealed during that night, so it's really important for us to wor worship, spend more time in worship. It's crazy to believe it's already, you know, that we're already two thirds of the way there, but we are. So without wasting any more time, let's get on with our first program, Zikr al today. Welcome aboard, friend. Time is flying by. Today, we will learn a dhikr that is for a specific time of the day, but you can say it during other times as well. The dhikr is, Allahumma bismika amlutu wa ahya. Let's learn what it means. When we break it down, it translates to, O oh Allah, in your name I die and in your name I live. Isn't that powerful? So why is this dhikr important? Dhikr reminds us that everything happens, big or small, in Allah's control. Every morning we wake up, it's with Allah. Every night we fall asleep, it's with Allah's care. When we know it's in His control, we can feel more comfortable with things that feel like they're in chaos sometimes. The power is used especially before we go to sleep. We brush our teeth and hair, wash our face, and get in bed. Then, we do a sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We say, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Hudayfiya radiallahu an, one of the Prophet's friends or the Sahaba says, when of the Prophet laid down for sleep at night, he would place his right hand under his right cheek and pray, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Whenever we say this thicket, we're getting closer to Allah and feeling his love around us. Once again, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. Let's say this thicket to practice it 10 times, but from now on, say it every night before bed. You got this. Next time before you go to sleep, wear your pajamas, brush those pearly whites, and say this thicket. Close your eyes, let worries depart. With thick in your heart, find peace within your heart. See you tomorrow. What a powerful vision to remind us that Allah is the all powerful. Let's recite the Sikir 5,000 times and open our hands and hearts for daily dua. Responsive, I turn to you with a heart filled with hope. Ya Rabbi, I beseech you to answer my prayers and grant me the desires of my heart. If they are in accordance with your will, guide me to ask for what is truly beneficial for me. Both in this life and the hereafter, help me to understand that sometimes what I desire may not be what is best for me. Teach the art of patience, Ya Mujib. Help me to wait for help me to wait for your response with trust and faith. And knowing that you that you will answer my prayers in the perfect way and that at the perfect time will fill my heart with gratitude and for all that you have already blessed me with. May I never take your blessings for granted and always be thankful for your infinite mercy. I mean. I mean. It was a very important dua. Surah Al-Baqarah says, Perhaps you hate a thing that is good for you, and perhaps you love a thing that is bad for you. Allah knows while you, while you know not. Up next, we have Ramadan Corners.
Does anyone get hungry or start thinking about what to eat for iftar? Let's jump into Ramadan cuisine. Back to Ramadan cuisine. My name is Sinia and my name is Batu. We're both sixth graders and we live in Dallas. So today we're going to be making Oreo cream cups. They're so easy to make. They only take four ingredients and they're so delicious. So let's get started. Let's test the ingredients. So the ingredients are Oreos, chocolate, heavy cream, five spoons of butter, and then some cups, blenders, and a spoon and a cup to mix. Okay, so let's get started. So first up, we're going to take our Oreos and put them in our blender and crush them. You guys can put like how much you want in it, but we have to do it, do it like so much, so I'm going to put a lot. Now we're going to close the lid and we're going to crush them in our blender. There we go. Now uh, we crush the Oreos, now we're going to put it in a bowl. Okay, and there we go. And we're going to save some of the Oreos for the cream part for later. Now, this is going to add the butter. butter. We're going to put the whole entire thing in there. Okay, there we go. Okay, now we mix until it gets like slimy and like, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, now we mixed up our <laughs> Oreos and our butter. Now we're gonna place them in our bowl, I mean our cups. So, okay. We're so. gonna get a little bit, just like that, and then we're gonna put, press it on top with like another one, so it can look like this. Now we're gonna repeat it. Now we're gonna repeat it for all of them. Now we repeat it on all of them. So now we're gonna make the cream part of our cream cups. Okay, now we're gonna do the cream part of our cream cups. We're gonna add the heavy. No. Okay, now we add our heavy cream. Um, we didn't mention this before we started the video, but we're gonna use a little bit of powdered sugar for a little bit of sweetness. Um, this is optional, so we're gonna add um, about three spoons of Sugar. Now we're gonna start mixing. Okay, so our main part is ready. Uh, we mixed it up until we uh, we saw like stuffed peaks. Now this is gonna add our crushed Oreos at the stage. Okay, now. We're gonna mix it. Now we're done mixing all together. Now we're gonna put it on like this one plastic thing so we can like put it in here so with the cups. Okay. I need a little help over here to lift it up. Okay, we're gonna try to put it all in without spilling. Now 
Now we're gonna cut up the end and we're gonna squeeze it in our little cups. Okay. Now we squeeze it in our cups like that. Now we're gonna repeat it in all of them. Now we're gonna add our chocolates to a bowl. Okay, let's just open them a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna put them in the microwave until it's melted. Yeah. Now we've melted our chocolate. We're gonna add a little bit of heavy cream for like texture. The more heavy cream you add, like the more like the chocolate gets like fudgy and stuff. So that's why we're gonna add. Now uh, we're the gonna, heavy cream is like in the chocolate. Now we're just gonna put it all on our cups. Okay. Oh my one without spilling, hopefully. Okay, now we finished our cream oh, cups. Cream cups. cups. And if you guys want to for decoration, you guys can put Oreos, like half Oreos, mm -hmm. on top of them. Just like this. Thank you guys for watching and happy Ramadan. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you girls for that recipe. They're almost like Oreo parfaits, if you will. Next up, let's see how Ramadan is lived in Bosnia. Assalamu alaikum, I am Erim and I am Amela. Today we will talk about Ramadan in Sanjak and Bosnia and Herzegovina. So in Sanjak, Ramadan is really special. It is quiet during the day, cafes are empty, mosques are full. Only just before Iftar it gets uh, crowded by preparation and buying pitice, which can bought only during this month. For Bosnia it's pretty much the same, but instead of pitice we buy some, which is much better than pitice. Uh, we fast for approximately 14 hours and uh, my favorite food for iftar is uh, topa and uh, some meat dishes like uh, burak and uh, ceva. In Sanjak for iftar we prepare that pitice with pepper with sour cream and after that we eat cevapi which are much better than Bosnian. Uh, sarme, meat and after that for dessert we eat dudovi which are so so delicious. Uh, and for every sehor we prepare uh, pie and manti. Uh, in Bosnia, iftar is typically shared with uh, close uh, family and friends, uh, forging a sense of community and uh, connection. In Sanjak, it is the same. We have big families, so for one iftar, uh, we can uh, have uh, 20 to 30 people together. Um, this is because uh, Ramadan is special. Uh, it fills our souls, it brings us uh, closer and together and uh, make us more mindful. So what makes Ramadan special for me uh, is definitely the unity and connection that it uh, gets us as we tell uh, different uh, stories and share meals. During Ramadan we have a special night uh, called Leila Tulkadar when we would go to mosque to pray uh, Taravih and after the Taravih Namas uh, we have uh, some program that uh, we would recite uh, Ilahi and Qasida. After that program kids would get get gifts and in that gifts it usually consists of toys and candies. Uh, so main differences in Sandak and um, Bosnia and Herzegovina is definitely food. <laughs> uh, so in Sandak our, our cafe uh, doesn't work during uh, the day and for Leila Tolkadr we pray uh, together at uh, square all night and school prepare uh, iftar for everyone. So that's it. Thank you for Thanks. attention. Salam alaikum. Bye. Bye. Thank you girls for sharing with us Ramadan Cypriot in Bosnia. With your beautiful mosque and amazing, the amazing foods, everything looks beautiful. Now we will learn the best time to make a dua.
you know the best times to make dua? As human beings during our daily life, we encounter different situations. Some of them will make us happy and some sad. By nature, life has twists and turns. No one is granted a completely happy life without any troubles, and no one has a life full of misery without any moments of joy. Life is a balance of both. One of the best ways to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help, guidance, or assistance is by making dua. In the Quran, it is said, O Muhammad, when my servants ask you about me, tell them I am quite near. I hear and answer the call of the caller whenever he calls me. Let them listen to my call and believe in me. Perhaps they will be guided aright. We all earnestly hope that our du'as are accepted, but did you know that there are specific times that du'as or supplications are more likely to be accepted? In today's episode of Did You Know, let's see what these best times are to make du'a. Number one, in the depths of the night. The Prophet ﷺ said, Our Lord, the Blessed and the Exalted, descends every night to the lowest heaven when one third of the latter part of the night is left and says, Who supplicates me so that I may answer him? Who asks me so that I may give to him? Who asks me forgiveness so that I may forgive him? Number two, before saying salam in a prayer. According to the hadith reported by Abu Umar radiallahu an, it was said, O Messenger of Allah, which dua is heard? He said, in the last third of the night and following every prescribed prayer. In interpreting following the prescribed prayers, some scholars are of the view that it is before the salam. Number three, between the azan and the ikama. The dua after hearing the call to prayer and the start of prayer is granted. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, a dua offered between the azan and ikama is not rejected. Number four, saying dua during free time and in good health regularly. The Prophet ﷺ said, If anyone finds pleasure in receiving an answer from God in times of difficulty, he should make many supplications when times are easy. Number five, during sujood in a prayer. The Prophet ﷺ said, The nearest a slave can be to his Lord, Allah, is while doing sujood, so increase in supplication. Number six, between Asr and Maghrib on Fridays. It is narrated from Jabir bin Abdullah that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Friday is 12 hours in which there is no Muslim slave who asks Allah SWT for something, but he will give it to him. So seek it in that last hour after Asr. Number seven, during Ramadan, especially before breaking fast, on the last 10 days and the Laylatul Qadr or the night of power. Ramadan, as the best month of all, is filled with great blessings when a servant does good deeds that include worship in the form of dua. The Prophet ﷺ said, There are three people whose dua is not rejected. The fasting person until he breaks the fast, the just ruler, and the oppressed person whose dua Allah lifts above the clouds and opens onto it the doors of Jannah. And Allah says, I swear by my honor, verily I shall assist you, even though it may be after some time. And as the last ten nights of Ramadan are deemed the best nights of all in a year, it is therefore greatly encouraged to say dua during those nights. As it was also mentioned in the last episode regarding Laylatul Qadr, Aisha radiallahu an said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, O Messenger of Allah, if I realize Laylatul Qadr, what should I supplicate in it? He said, Say, O Allah, you are pardoning and you love to pardon, so pardon me. We should try to make dua an important part of our life, something we can't get by without. Dua is a safe haven for us when we have nowhere else to go. Dua is an inspiration for those that have lost hope. Dua can be done anytime and anywhere, but as the video explained, there are certain times and places that will bring about more barakat if done dua in. Anyways, next up, let's check out our hadith of the day. There was a poor man who was getting old. He had lost all his strength and now he was gradually losing his eyesight too. 
Because of his shaking hands, he could no longer hold a spoon properly. He spilled more food on the tablecloth than he was able to put in his mouth. His son and daughter-in-law were always telling him to be careful. They will get very angry with him, especially when the food spilled down his chin. Finally, they set a separate table away from theirs. His little grandson David felt very sad about his grandfather. He tried to help him by holding the spoon for him, so he would not spill his food. One day, the old man accidentally dropped and broke his plate while he was eating. He looked at his children sitting at the table with tears in his eyes. They got very angry. They scalded him and broke his heart. From that time on, they served him his meals in plastic plates. One day, the old man's son told his wife not to put the fruit on the plastic plate and told her to throw the plates into the trash. David took two of the plates and told his mothers not to throw them away for they will the pl plates in the future. What do you want them from? His father asked. David replied, I will use them for your meals when you get older. David's parents felt very ashamed. They started to let their father eat with them once again. If the son and his wife had only known that the best way to get into heaven was to treat our parents well, they would probably not have acted in a such way. Our prophet made this clear in the following hadith. Allah's pleasure is gained in pleasing parents, and Allah's wrath is incurred in upsetting the parents. We should always be respectful and kind to our parents. Now we have tafsir video and we'll learn Surah Al-Falaq. Say, take refuge in the Lord of the morning. Falak means to cut through and reveal. In the surah, it is thought to refer to the morning light that is ushered in after the night and when darkness is cut with the light of the sun. After all, Allah uses the descriptive adjective, the splitter of the darkness of the night and the revealer of the morning for himself. In a metaphorical sense, Allah is deemed to provide the source of protection and offer guidance as the revealer of the morning and get us out of any of the dark times that we might be going through in life. Life. from the evil of everything that you have created when describing what to take refuge from in the surah a general term such as everything that you have created is used at first in actuality nothing except allah almighty himself is exempt from the general sphere that this phrase implies this ayah itself is enough to cover the material that is going to be addressed in the subsequent ayahs because of the general term that it employs However, just to draw some attention to the danger and magnitude of some of the worst evils that we should take refuge from, after this general plea, three specific things are mentioned, the first of which is the evils of the night when darkness settles. The night harbors a lot of evils within itself. First and foremost, it's dark, scary, and frightening. In some sense, the nighttime is when living beings are deprived of their lives in the form of sleep. Vermin and predators of all sorts leave their caves during the night when the endless darkness is covering them. Thieves, enemies, and 
and outlaws take advantage of the darkness in order to execute their plans. Fires are usually set ablaze during this time. At night, the jinn and shaitan are free to travel and usually prefer to do so. That's why we have the common idiom in our repertoire, the evils of the morning are preferred to the benefits of the night. We need to protect ourselves from the evils of the night and seek refuge in Allah. The witches who blow their magic through knotted dots. They are the ones who perform magic and spells. They might be men or women, however, you could get the sense that what is meant is applicable to bigger groups and other people from the structure of the ayah. Dark magic is done in the way that the ayah describes, in a form that could have effects such as creating disagreements among spouses, suddenly changing a person's mood, and altering their perspectives on life. This is why our religion outlaws performing magic that hurts people and tells us to seek refuge in Allah from these evil actions. From the jealousy of the one who is envious, Jealousy is the plan of taking away what is deemed precious and desirable in someone else's life whilst having the hope of acquiring those things for yourself. It is a human feeling and something that, at times, we cannot control. It is not hurtful if we do not act upon this feeling, but it is a feeling that doesn't leave us alone and eats away at us every day. For the ayah speaks of those who have these feelings towards other humans. <laughs> Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to recite, used to recite Surah al falaq every night before sleeping. So we can also do the same. Are you guys excited? Because next up, we have our Kahoot. Hello everyone, welcome to the Kahoot. I'm your host Zainab. I'm telling you the code, it's our code is 82924. Are you guys ready? We're about to begin. I will wait you guys join in with your amazing names. Our code is 82924. But before we begin, I want I want all of you guys to like our video and subscribe to our channel so we can start. But if you're not subscribed or like the video, we will wait a, a little bit longer. Hold on. Get your notes ready guys, we're about to begin. And don't forget to subscribe and like our channel.
I saw a nickname called We Love Zainab. I hope you're talking about Godmates. So we will start guys, good luck everyone, don't forget to get your notes ready, and we're starting. Okay, let's start. The first question is coming, guys. Day 20. 3, 2, 1. And the first question is, what was today's secret? Subhanallah wa bihamdi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. La ilaha illallah wa ta'ala shirika la. Allahumma bismika amutu wa. The correct answer is Allahumma bismike amutu wa ahya. Let's check our scoreboard, guys. So, Ki is in the first place, Miss is in the second, Fortnite is third, Naji is the fourth, Emrullah is the fifth. Let's continue with the second question. What does Allahumma bismike amutu wa ahya mean? Oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy upon me. I seek the forgiveness of Allah's Almighty. Oh, in your name I die and in your name I live. Oh Allah, there is no ease other than what you make easy. The correct answer is, Oh Allah, in your name I die and in your name I live. And the third question is coming, but before that, let's check out the sword. Naji is in the first place. Mesut is in the second, Bahar is in the third, Leila is in the fourth, and Dilara in the fifth. And the question is coming What did our friends make for Ramadan cuisine today? Banana pudding, Oreo cream cups, chocolate chip cookies, and strawberry cheesecake. Which one was that? And the correct answer is Oreo cream cups. Let's check out the scoreboard. Nadi is in the first place, Dilara in the second, Mesut in the third, Leila in the fourth, and Bohar in the fifth. Before we move on to second, I, next question, I will I want to remind you that please like our video and subscribe our channel. Let's continue. Where were our sisters from in the segment of film along the world? Bosnia, Albania, Turkey, Macedonia. Which one was that? The 
answer is Bosnia. Let's check out the scoreboard. Leila is in the first place, Dilara in the second, Naji in the third, Bahar in the fourth, and Vehbi Chokavji in the fifth. Next question, guys. What was today's hadith about? Our actions towards the elderly, actions towards our siblings, our actions toward animals, and our actions toward our parents. The correct answer is our actions towards our parents. Let's check the scoreboard. Dilara is in the first place, Naji in the second, Bahar in the third, Ekrem in the fourth, and Jamal in the fifth. Let's continue. What was the surah in today's Tefsir video? Al Falak, Al Rat, Al Mulk, Al Furqan. Remember, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, used to recite this surah every night before sleeping. The correct answer is Al Falak. Our scoreboard change Dilara is in the first place, Bahar in the second, Naji in the third, Jamal in the fourth, and Ekram in the fifth. Next question. True or false? One of the best times to make a dua in Ramadan before breaking fast on the last 10 days and the Laylatul Qadr. True or false? And the correct answer is true. Dilara in the first place, Ekrem in the second, Said ibn Abdul in the third, Emrullah in the fourth, and Jamal in the fifth. Let's continue. What are the worst evils we have to take refugee from? From the jealousy of the one who is envious, the witches who blow their magic through knotted thoughts, all of the above, the evils light when darkness settles. After above is the correct answer, guys. Ekrem is in the first place, Said in Abdul in the second, Dilara in the third, Yavuz in the fourth, and Kerem is in the fifth. Let's continue. In today's hadith, it said Allah's pleasure is gained in pleasing us, Ra is included in upsetting the pets, teachers, parents, or friends. The correct answer is in the par parents. Let's check out the scoreboard. Ekram is in the first place, Said Abdul in the second, Dilara in third, Yav is in the fourth, and Kiram in the fifth. Let's go to last question, guys. What toy was beside our plastic host, Zainab and Issa? Giraffe, car, cat, slot, stuffed animals. The correct answer is slot stuff animals. Let's check out the, our final scoreboard. The third place is Dilara, and the second place is Said in Abdul, Ab Ab and the first place is coming Ekiramidi. Congrats, guys! Don't forget to send your screenshots and don't forget to subscribe our channel and like our video. Let's continue our program.
Thank you everyone for participating. Hope you have a wonderful iftar. Don't forget to go to Taraweeh prayer and see you all tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Goodbye.